Hello this is John from Salford and Manchester Gaming Haven and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about Keyforge. Now it's quite a hot game at the moment, everybody seems to be talking about it. You might not necessarily know much about what it actually is. So I'm going to give you a few things about the basics of the game. So first of all we'll start off with what exactly you need to play the game. Uh, first of all you can either get a starter set for about 35 to 40 pounds or you can get an individual deck here now the unique thing about all of these is that every single deck you can get is completely unique no one else in the world will have exactly the same combination of cards in your deck now what's actually in each deck well now typically this is what a deck will look like you start off with a house card and now this actually tells you the title of your deck in this case we have Targ Lever, Spawn of Lupacan they all have equally ludicrous names all of which are chosen at random by a computer I think along with the components of the deck some sort of algorithm that they use to choose the names also the pitch on the deck is unique as well and the combination of houses that the deck contains. So to play, as I say, you need a deck. Uh, obviously, per player, you need a deck for each player. So the individual decks are about eight to nine pounds each, uh, and they are unique, each one. So this particular unique deck has the house Dis, Untamed, and Logos, or Logos, it's called. Okay. Now, in the game, you're going to be using your deck to try and get amber and amber is the currency of the game you collect six amber and you can call, forge a key forge three keys and you win the game hence the name key forge now in order to do that you need a deck but you also need some tokens now in the starter set you do get some tokens but you can also print your own now I've printed off uh, some of these now these are from a file on Thingiverse. I've printed these using my 3d printer These are the amber These need painting up ideally, but you can play with them as they are those are my amber And there's various other tokens damage tokens and things like that Within there too Okay, there is another alternative you can pick up These kind of crystals, you know, you can find these in many other board games or you can get them from aquarium shops, that kind of thing. Um, and they are just varying colours. The sort of crystal pieces. They look a bit prettier than the 3D printed ones. But like I say, they can be painted up. I've just not got around to doing that yet. So those are the crystal pieces. Well basically the first person... The first player gets dealt seven cards, the second player dealt six, ca six cards. The way that turn works is that every every time at the start of your turn, you can determine whether you want to forge a key or not, which requires six amber. It has to be done at the start of the turn, unless a card says otherwise. And then you choose a house. So my choice here is again, this Untamed or Logos. So you choose a house and then you can play a card from that house in front of you. So in this case I can play a creature. This is a Snufflegator, it's actually one of my favourite creatures in the game. So Snufflegator, it's a creature, it tells you as such on the card. The house is in the top left. The amount of damage it can take is in the top right, uh, is on the middle left, sorry. And that's also the damage it deals. And on the right hand side here, this is a shield or armour. Uh, and this is how many it will absorb before it starts taking damage. Also a few keywords on there, beast in this case. Um, other cards refer to certain keywords. When it comes into play, it comes into play exhausted is the official terminology. I'm sure most players will say tapped. Because the actual creator of this game, Richard Garfield, actually created Magic the Gathering. So I'm sure he wouldn't mind if we say tapped. Although... Technically Magic the Gathering have trademarked the word tapped. Okay, so you put this in play tapped. You play all of your cards from the particular house that you want to play. Or 
discard any cards of that same house you've chosen and then you draw back up to six. In the first turn the first player plays one and then doesn't need to draw up because they start with seven and then the second player plays a turn as normal. At the end of your turn your cards ready up and they are ready for next turn. Now when I say that you can play cards, you when you choose your house you can play cards, well you can also use your cards of that same house that are already down in front of you. So for instance I could play cards from the untamed house or of course I can uh, use these creatures. Now other types of cards we have artifacts. Now artifacts again come in exhausted and then these are cards that persist from round to round and you can use these by exhausting them each turn. Now again there is a stipulation that you can only use this particular artifact when you choose the untamed house but there are some cards that say Omni and that means that no matter what house you've chosen you can still choose to use and exhaust that artifact. Okay, so that's an example of an artifact. Then we have an upgrade. Now this is played again um, when you choose that particular house, and again untamed. And this is attached to a creature. So in this case, the creature gains Assault 2. And that means before the creature attacks, deal 2 damage to the attacked enemy. Now when you actually attack, you choose to attack, you deal both damage simultaneously. So this is quite powerful because if you attach this to a character, then you will deal two damage before any of that. So that's quite powerful. Normally you'd exhaust a creature, you'd target another creature, and then you'd do the simultaneous damage. So if the other creature had four, uh, then they would both kill each other. Now another alternative to creatures that you can do is you can reap and that means you exhaust your creature without attacking and that gets you an amber. Obviously very powerful. Any amber that you get stays on your house card and obviously when you have six at the start of your turn you have to forge a key. Now then Another type of card we have, the file type of card, is an action card. Now this has an immediate effect. In this case, Vigor. Heal up to 3 damage from a creature. If you heal 3 damage, gain 1 Amber. Okay. And also the fact that there's this Amber symbol in the corner here. That means as soon as you play that card, you gain 1 Amber. So that's pretty useful. So once these are used, these action cards, are, they're put in your discard pile. Okay. Now, there are also particular cards that refer to capturing or stealing amber. If you capture amber, then the amber comes on to your... If I can pick up this piece of amber, it gets put on your creature. And when that creature is killed, that amber goes back to the owner. Now, if you steal amber, it goes from your opponent's card straight onto your card. Okay, so that's uh, very useful. So, to summarise... Uh, we have a play area here. This is based on a, a two-player play mat. You can see in the white you have the player area for yourself. And the opponent's area is opposite. Usually people sit opposite each other. And then any card, when they get played, get played in the player area. Like this. So for each one you can decide individually whether you want to exhaust an attack or exhaust and reap. Also when you play an upgrade, you play an upgrade onto an existing card. And finally, when you play an artifact, that goes into an area to the right of your play area, which basically holds artifacts, and they always come in exhausted. So like I say, the, um, the unique thing about this is the fact that every combination of cards in every deck is unique. And that leads to some interesting kind of tournament formats really. 
there are some tournament formats where you can just come and you buy a deck there and then you use that deck in the tournament but there are others where you can play with a deck and then you swap with your opponent and you play again and then you also bid for the deck with something called chains uh, but that's something that I'll go on in another video this was just meant to be a, a brief overview to tell you what it's all about and it is worth getting into it's not got anything like the high amount of money investment involved in something like Magic the Gathering the art is on the whole family friendly so any ages can play it is fairly simple once you get going as always there are some things to do with certain cards that have got FAQs for and that kind of thing like any game this type but in general it's fairly simple enjoyable and if you come down to Salford and Manchester Gaming Haven on a Wednesday night or to the Forge every first Sunday of every month we'll have some Keyforge decks with us and you'll be able to play we'll also try and film play of a game of Keyforge just to give you an idea but uh, for now that's everything from me bye for now <laughs>